One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Am I counting wrong? Oh my God, this is crazy. Become quite the favorite. In my opinion, she's the queen. Rolling a booger in your fingers. You ever do that, kids? They find a way to get into trouble. Holy smokes. What's going on, everybody? We're hanging out here in the Red Foot Enclosure, and it's a little bit of spring cleaning going on. As you can see, the rainy season's back. We got a bit of a drizzle, but here's what's going on. My drain that I installed here is getting clogged up by all this leaf litter. So it's time for me to really spend a lot of time in the Red Foot Enclosure. We're gonna clean it up today. We're also gonna talk a lot about Red Foot Tortoises. They're one of my favorite species. They're a very common species in the pet trade, and they are one of the best pets because they don't get huge, they're personable, and they're hardy. So uh, today we're gonna hang out with my red foots. There's 30 of them in here. And of course there's Lego right there. Thank you. She's always wanting to see what I'm up to. But yeah, we're just gonna get to work. I gotta clean this all up. Maybe move some of these rocks around and uh, good times as always. So um, yeah, I'll see you in a minute. Gotta get raking. bit of cleaning here nothing too major but uh, pretty important to do because I don't want that drain to keep getting clogged up so I gotta maintain it but anyhow the boys and girls know what this means these are my flat trays I like feeding these guys on these trays because we got some sand in here and uh, we don't want to get an unnecessary impaction also you know every once in a while because we use fill we order sometimes the fill has little pieces of debris in it so you got to be careful of that as well so let's go over here. As this thing erodes, I'm going my pocket. But we're gonna be feeding them and sure gonna be seeing a lot of tortoises in a moment. Uh, if you thought the curious ones were funny, wait till you see them come out to eat. This is, of course, I'm using the Fluker Buffet Blend. I really like this diet and so do the tortoises. And if you come up close, check this out. If we look in here, it's got little bits of squash, freeze dried, freeze dried carrots. And we also have some red peppers. So these guys are definitely getting some beta carotenes, which is important for their overall well-being as well as the actual pellet. So I like to just kind of spread it around. I'd say they know what's in that bucket. Oh, they know. It's whenever I come with this bucket. Hold on, young lady. Got to get her out so i just spread it on out here they go right into it so let's see how many come from far and wide look at this they're coming from everywhere <laughs> how about this one this one's going four wheeling over here look at this get in there quick right oh down. my god yeah she's uh she's a character she just threw herself off yeah she kind of just went up and over oh no let's see what she does let's see if she can manage this good thing i'm here but this happens from time to time some of the tortoises will flip over or get themselves in a predicament and i want my children to be self-reliant and as you can see she figured it out pretty well so that's good stuff so you know obviously if the animal was there for a long time i would have intervened but i'm always walking around making sure the tortoises are flipped over we try to make this you know tortoise friendly but uh even your best intentions with an environment they find a way to get into trouble so it's important that they can rely on each, on themselves to get out of it let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six we got four more Come on over here, let's see if anyone's indoors. Now, for those of you who don't know, this enclosure has an indoor room. Oh, here comes one. So there was one more in here. But I, I designed it so that they actually had an inside area so that when they needed it for inclement weather, hurricanes, cold snaps, stuff like that, we'll go ahead and uh, do that. They also share it with our beautiful Princess Buttercup. And look at her all stretched out. And guess what, people? She shed. Remember the last time we saw her, she was not at all shed. She also has a tick on her eyeball. Holy smokes. I, I'm one of those types. That I can't, um, I gotta get it out. You gotta get this tick all situated. Let's get this figured out. She's also, after she shed, she's also pretty hungry. So I gotta be careful here. This is gonna take two seconds and we'll get right back to our regular, yeah, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program. Let me first just let her know hey, hey, honey, you're getting, I'm just touching you today. You're just gonna get touched. And look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this. 
Look how good she is. She's good. Come, come here. We're gonna just gently. I really should be. I know. I know you're upset. There we go. We got wow. it. Got the tick right off. Holy smokes. And she didn't seem to be bothered by that at all. She knows dad's just helping her out. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program about red foot tortoises. But you can kind of see that, you know, things happen in this environment. There's always something going on. And we have to make sure that we can adapt quickly and take care of things. Because I don't want to forget, when I see something, I react. I just got to get it going. I'm also having a little fun. It's like a booger, rolling a booger in your fingers. You ever do that, kids? No one picks their nose, right? That doesn't happen. But anyway, we just killed that tick. Okay, so we have, I believe, 27 of them have made it out here, which means there should be a few more. There should be some more. Let's do another count. We got 30. Wow, 30. Huh. Am I counting wrong? Come on, guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30 is on its way over here. There's the last one making his way over here. So red foot tortoises are found in South America. Here, he's taking the long way. Red foot tortoises are found in South America. They can also be found on certain Caribbean islands where they were introduced, um, but they are a really widespread animal. They have a large range. They go from uh, Brazil, Bolivia, Guyanas, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, really found throughout uh, most of the northern portion of South America. And these guys are also very hardy. There'll be some uh, geographic variations. You have some lighter ones, as you can see here. We've got darker ones. But um, these all are animals that were basically, um, you know, some I bought many, many years ago. Others, of course, like Lego, were given to me uh, by viewers. Um, this is a, a species that I love working with, as I mentioned, because they do so well down here in Florida. They can tolerate our human environment. They can tolerate our, our dry environment as well. They go through seasonal changes in their habitats as well. So. They can be found in grasslands, in forests, in flooded forests. They're just very hardy and able to adapt to a lot of different environmental factors. So that's a, another reason to make some uh, fantastic species. You'll see some of them have nice smooth carapaces. Some of them have a little bit of pyramiding. That's because some of these were raised in captivity. Uh, they were given to me sight unseen. And you can see that sometimes with the pyramiding, it's caused by low humidity as a hatchling, too fast to growth the wrong food there's a lot going on oh we got a tortoise upside down already let's see what's gonna happen here I may need to intervene in this one because there's really nothing for him to push off against and it is a male let's go look at him this leads us to our next little lesson for those of you who are new to tortoises male redfoots and male tortoises in general are gonna have this nice concavity here to their plastron that's the bottom of their shell they also have a very long tail you see this tail very very long he's a little shy he's hiding it but this one right here is a female flat plastron, dainty little tail, and the males have this curve on their plastron so they can fit on the female, and that long tail helps get their reproductive organs situated over her cloaca, which is the opening cloaca, okay? Reptiles and birds have a cloaca, and some mon uh, mammals as well, called monotremes, means one opening, uh, like I believe the echidna, um, is also a is a monotreme it's an egg laying mammal but it retains a cloaca not a rectum so the cloaca is a multi-use uh organ the sexual organs are located in there and they also they get rid of their waste through the cloaca as well there you go one opening gets the job done we flipped him over no problem you'll also notice on the males if you get a above shot here you can look at some of the larger males you see they have this narrowing of their waist if you will uh we call that wasping uh it's kind of an hourglass shape males of the true red foot uh uh, species they get this whereas females do not do not and the males of uh, the type of red foot called a cherry head tortoise which we have also they don't get that as well and in fact female cherry heads 
can sometimes look like males because they'll get a little bit of a concavity on their plastron as well. You'll also notice a little white here, guys. You see this white? This is just a very superficial fungus that you get from time to time keeping your tortoises outdoors here in Florida. It's very, it's not shell rot. They call it scud. And uh, if it were to get bad, which it usually doesn't, it's not a big deal. But what you're looking for with these tortoises, some of the ailments they can get is shell rot if they're kept too wet all the time. And that would be an ulcerative attack of their shell. And you would notice it would be soft, it would be weeping, there would be pus or blood. And, uh, but the, this stuff here, the scud, is not an issue. If you really wanted to get rid of that, you would apply some coconut oil or athlete's foot cream. That could kind of kill that external scud, no problem. We also have Lucky here. You guys might remember Lucky. I don't know how many of you do, but when I first got Lucky, she came to me from Bush Wildlife Sanctuary and she was hit by a lawnmower. You can see she's got a scar here and the top of her shell was shaved off and it was all exposed and it was all bloody. But over the years, the bone has replaced itself and you can see this is the last bit of wounded bone that's about to pop off. We just have to let nature take its course. Their shells heal from the inside out. So they start to develop new bone underneath and it pushes out the old bone. And that's why underneath we have new keratin and new bone that's taken place. But we also have this kind of divot in here. It is what it is. She'll never be 100% as beautiful. Well, I don't wanna say that too loud. She's beautiful to me. But it'll never be as perfect as her original shell. But she's pretty good. And I did remove you from your food. That was not polite of me, was it? Let me put her over here where she can get some more food un unheated by the uh, the brutes that have taken it away. You see how fast they get to work on their food, guys? Just incredible. So the redfoots are really a, a fantastic species. They will eat a wide variety of grasses, fruits, vegetables, pellets. They'll even um, scavenge for carrion. Uh, which is dead animal or earthworm slugs, things like that. Anything they can easily grab because protein, even for a vegetarian, is a valuable resource. These guys aren't hunting anything, but if they come across something in the forest or the grasslands, they may have died, they'll eat it. Tortoises will even gnaw on old bones, if you can believe that. That's how they'll kind of get some extra calcium to help with their own bones. So I've seen them gnawing on bones. We throw cuddle, cuddlefish bone in here that you get for parrots and parakeets to gnaw their beaks on. It provides the same function for tortoises. As you know, tortoises have a beak. So therefore, they need to wear that down. So that's why um, I like to throw that cuttlefish in here and allow them to gnaw on certain things. There's no greenery in here. They've eaten pretty much everything green, but I do keep some things on hand. I plant hibiscus here, and we're in luck because there happens to be some hibiscus flowers that have popped out. So I just pluck them off. You can also grab some of the leaves. We'll plug off some of these leaves. I like to plant them in an area that the tortoises cannot get to them because then you have a nice treat for your tortoises. If you're walking by, it's in between feeding days. You can just simply pull off some of this stuff, throw it down, and they have absolutely no problem just going right to town. Look at this, they're gonna just get right in on those flowers. They love it. Um, the colors just draw them to it. It's also very hardy for them. Some of the other plants that I have around the property are uh, alocasia, elephant ears, they'll eat that. Uh, of course, there goes Lego. They'll eat mulberry leaves, which I have. And of course, I have a Puntia cactus. It's a spineless variety of prickly pear that is readily found here in Florida. It was introduced, so a lot of my neighbors have it. And years ago, I grabbed it and started a lot Lot of different trees or plants or bushes whatever cactus bush is that what it is plant I don't know but there's a lot of it in the front yard and I like to collect it sometimes throw it down the tortoises love to do that as well they love eating it uh, look at Lego go and this is really great because we got Lego you notice she's got this really grotesque kind of uh, metabolic bone disease, pyramiding of the shell. Uh, this was from just improper care from an early age and improper foods. But here at Camp Cannon, when she came to me, I knew she would be an amazing ambassador. She's also one of the funniest tortoises I have and happens to be the fastest yeah. as well. Right? And Matt, Definitely. you notice that. She's quick. She does not play around, especially when food has been put out. We're going to throw that there and this tortoise will eat it as well. I get babies from these guys. Uh, I get egg laying from October until right about now. What I use to find the eggs, and I don't think we're going to find any today, friends, because I actually went a few days ago and I kind of already started probing. 
So I don't think we're gonna find any nests, but I basically walk around and gently tap this probe near areas where I know they like to lay. They like to lay their eggs uh, near bushes, in sandy soil, up against things. And if I feel this thing sink in, that's when I know I potentially have an egg cavity or a nest cavity. So you just kind of walk around and do this. But like I said, guys, I kind of dug up all the eggs a few days ago. I should have waited until this video. But you just tap, 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 and you'll feel it sink all the way in. Then you can just dig up the eggs. I have a bunch of them in the incubator, and we have some babies uh, in our little nursery I can show you here at the end of the video. But the eggs take about five months before they hatch, from the moment they're laid to the moment that they actually hatch. And they start by pipping out, and uh, it's really cool. Look at her, she's coming, here she comes. She just wants to be where I am. I love that tortoise. Uh, I remember when I first saw her, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Here, let me help her. I love this girl. She's my little lady. We help her out. We get her there. She's become quite the favorite. In my opinion, she's the queen of this little gaggle of tortoises, if you will. So really, really excited about the Redfoots. I hope you guys are too. Check it out. One of the things we've designed in this enclosure when the Aquascape guys came is we have this waterfall coming off here. We got fresh water for them. There is no chemicals in this pond. It is all just natural filtration. So they're able to come here, they soak, they can bathe. They used to have a cave that they would get into down here, but I had to block it off some because they would go so far back that in the cold weather, it was harder and harder for me to reach in and actually pull them out. So I've kind of put some rocks just to give them a little bit of a retreat, but not enough that they can't, that they get away from it. I've also strategically placed this log jam here in the waterfall because they're so good. Tortoises, and Matt, you've noticed this being here. Tortoises have become, they're more athletic and agile than people give them credit for. So you gotta be careful and make sure you tortoise proof everything. We've got a little bit of a uh, rock wall here that I've retained and we've put this nice uh, structure here, this nice wire. Now this ficus is growing on it, which is great, because that should obscure um, the actual wire. And that's what I'm hoping. It'll just become, you know, over the years uh, covered with this ficus. The other good thing is these guys love to nibble on this as well. So when it comes down, they nibble on it. But again, you wanna make sure that your enclosure or habitat has the basics for these tortoises. Good substrate, water, fresh water, a feeding dish, and some hiding, and some greenery that they can get in and out of and kind of make their lives more interesting. I do firmly believe we have to keep these tortoises interested in their environments. Even though turtles and tortoises are creatures of habit, that means that they're animals that live in a small range. So why these animals overall are so endangered is because they just, their habitat is getting crisscrossed with buildings and roads and they don't really adapt to change that quickly. These are animals that have been around for 250 million years. So it's important that we do our best to keep everything set up for them, but don't do too many changes in their enclosure because they kind of like things to stay the same. They know where the food is, they always know that I feed them here. That's why they all congregate when I walk into this area. They love a good rainstorm also. And as I said, we are now into our wet season, which is fantastic because it's been dry. So let's head on over here. We're gonna get this food out of here. We're gonna have a look at another species or rather subspecies of the tortoise, the redfoot tortoise, that's the cherry heads. And then we're gonna look at the babies and we're gonna speed this up because it's getting a little wet. Let me get a tray. We're gonna feed these guys. They are very active in rainstorms because the humidity goes up and that's like the Goldilocks time. Tortoises like to be active at these certain times of the day. Most tortoises are what they call crepuscular, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. But these guys will also come out in the rain. We've got some wandering around. They can actually feel when the humidity goes up. So let's go ahead, do this. And much like our regular red butts, our cherry heads, which retain that red head throughout their entire life, which is why they call them cherry heads, they will come over here just like our other red butts. Now these guys make an even better pet 
if you live in an area where you don't have a lot of space, and that's because you're looking at a full-size adult male right there, okay? There's some another male, and then behind you, I believe that's a female, and that'll have the same concave plastron as the males. But as I mentioned, the females can sometimes trick you. Case in point, Darth Maul. Let me introduce you if you haven't met her yet. Let's get her out here. Yeah, we got to do a little spray cleaning in here as well. So today is a maintenance day, but yes, let's push some of these guys out. Here's Darth Maul. She's a little stinky right now. We're going to pull her out. But she's got a concave plastron and a long tail, or so I thought, until she laid an egg for me. So let's get her out like that. I'm going to go ahead and get my, uh, get my hose. We're going to spray this out because it's time. I'm also going to take the rest of this food and put it in. You enjoy those tortoises for a minute. I'll be right back. I'm just going to spray this out. Oh no, I've got a kink. I got a kink in my hose. Ah, it's wet. Hold this hose. Stay there. Okay, sorry guys. Mother Nature is just not cooperating. But I do this once a week. We just spray this out. It all drains out the front. Fertilizes my bird of paradise. And that's what I do, man. Gotta be done. And it smells great. It smells awesome. You gotta really love your tortoises, people. You gotta keep them clean. Because keeping them clean is paramount to keeping them healthy. So that's what we're doing today. And you guys are along for the ride. Now, of course, I've got quite a bit, quite a lot of tortoises here at the camp. But they're all very happy. See this? Just a light sprinkle. It's a light sprinkle here. Um, I'll tell you what, why don't you guys go have a look at those babies? They're probably walking around in there at the moment. So there you have it. We've got tortoises from big to small. You learned a lot about redfoot. It's time now I get the heck out of this weather. I think it's gone beyond a little light sprinkle. See you guys.